On the uh, cladding crisis, uh, this tweet says, please make sure everyone knows it isn't just EWS uh, one and not being able to sell and remedial bills. Uh, uh, waking watch and insurance will bankrupt us all first. Well, certainly, yes, Rachel mentioned the high cost of insurance. And uh, Emily in Newham, you know something about that. Tell me what's happened to you. Hi, yeah, Hi. I'm currently experiencing um, the impacts of the cladding scandal. Um, there's a lot of bills involved in it. I've just recently had a... Um Emily, you're still there. Sorry, hi, I think my line got cut off. Sure, um, go ahead. I'm experiencing issues with not having an ESW1 form, and currently what that means for me is that my building insurance premium has been hiked up drastically. So it's gone from £35,000 a year to £280,000 a year, and that's a, a £3,000 bill that leaseholders kind of weren't expecting but just fallen on our doorstep. And that's the first in a number of interim measures which we're going to have to stump up the, the payments for alongside currently any remediation works. So it's a really tough situation that all these soldiers are facing right now. How are you and your neighbours dealing with the uh, increasing financial demands? Um, it's with real difficulty. Um, I know all these soldiers aren't, aren't able to come up with the money straight away. Um, it, it's just really, really difficult to find a way to get around it. We can't not pay it and not insure our building. It, that's kind of not an option. Um, we're just trying to do as much as we can right now to get the government to support us to end our cladding scandal and protect leaseholders. When did you realise you had a problem? So I realised last year I was actually looking to potentially sell my flat and then I, I discovered that we didn't have a valid ESW1 form and slowly but surely found out all of the details around the form um, and what that kind of meant for me. Is it not a, a sort of heart-dropping moment when, when that dawns on you? Yeah, it's it's absolutely devastating. Um, it's not only that I, you know, not being able to sell my flat is difficult because it means that I, I, I don't know whether in one year's time, two years' time, five years' time, how long I'm going to be living here for and I can't plan for my future. But on the other hand, I, it's also the financial impact and the mental impact of being stuck and knowing that all of these bills are going to be coming my way at the moment. And we, we need the support of government and MPs to protect leaseholders. I can't say it enough. I wonder too, Emily, about the effect of uh, COVID or specifically the, the lockdown. You've got all this to deal with, but I imagine if you're like most other people, you're, you've got a lot of extra time at home, staring out the window, unable to go out, uh, fretting about all of this. Yeah, you're completely right. That was really the reason that I was looking to move last year, to move somewhere with more space um, for a better quality of life. You know, I'm in a, a high-rise building in London and I wanted to move out of that. And when you're stuck at home all of the time in a building like mine where there's cladding and building safety issues, there's also that added risk that you're always thinking about fire and, and you know, the safety of yourselves and your neighbours and everyone around you um, constantly in question. So there's always anxiety around it. And, you know, combining that with a global pandemic going on, um, people are really struggling. We've had a, a text from Paul who says, and you might want to respond to this, Emily, can you explain to me as a British taxpayer why is the cladding issue a government problem, not a local council and building control problem? Do these flat owners pay service fees to whoever runs the building? Yeah, so we do, all leaseholders will pay service charges to the people who own the buildings. Why the leaseholders shouldn't be held responsible is because we had no input on what was used when these buildings were built. My building was built when I was 12 years old. You know, I had no say in what kind of materials were used here. I bought my flat on good faith, but it met building regulations and was a safe building to live in. Um, the government has since changed the regulations and are retrospectively applying these new regulations to buildings. But there's there's no kind of strategy or fund in place to actually get those changes to happen and the people who built the buildings aren't taking ownership or responsibility for this and it's automatically falling down to leaseholders 
And the other part is that there are thousands, and I mean really thousands of buildings in this position where safety, it, it, it hasn't been it hasn't been addressed and leaseholders it's going to bankrupt leaseholders if all of the costs fall to them there's the the kind of simple way of putting Hmm. it the housing market will crash Emily, thank you for calling and I'm sorry you're going through it as so many others are and maybe the next time we talk about this I hope you will have better news to impart do call us again, let us know how it's going